Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we have to make some repairs on a Corian countertop. Actually, I gotta fix 80 holes. So, in the CAD file, I moved the countertop and it, it moved the holes. So, essentially, they're off by about a half inch. So, I have to repair every single hole. So, let me turn this camera around, I'll show you what we need, and we'll start fixing them. All right, so there's the countertop, and these are the holes that need to be repaired. So the first step, I made a bunch of test pieces. These are all the test pieces that I made, and they're all different sizes. So um, the hole is a quarter inch hole, this hole here. That's a quarter inch. And so these are like 0 0.245, 0 0.24, and it depends on how sharp the, the router bit is on the CNC. So, and how slow you cut it. So anyway, what you do is you just take these and you just keep testing them. See, that one fits right there. So that's a good one. But look at this one. This one doesn't fit at all. That one's too tight. These were the first three that I made. They're all way too tight. And you gotta have them a little loose so the glue because the epoxy is thick, so the epoxy has to go. See, that one goes in there, but that one's like too big. You know, it's stuck now, but. Uh, and then this one's three. Three is like way, way too loose. But this one here, that fits perfect. See that? Okay, so what I did was I made all of them. You can see that. I have 80 holes to fill. So I just made a ton of them. See that? So what I did when I cut them out on the CNC, and then I, I marked a little black dot on the top of it, because that's going to go down. I'm going to put that down. So this is the hole here, and I'm going to push it down right like that. So what I need is, got a paper towel here with some acetone, and we're going to clean, we're going to clean the surface here, and then I'm just going to use some epoxy, some two-part epoxy for the tip. We're gonna put that adhesive right on these holes, and then we'll take this little plug, this little plug, and let's see, we'll take it and we'll put it in the hole and we'll twist it as we go down with it, just to make sure it's covered with adhesive. And after it cures, this will be sticking up a little bit. You see that? It sticks up just a tad bit. We'll grind that down flat. We'll blend this, this countertop in with the surrounding areas, we'll sand these down. And then we'll flip the tops over and fill the bottom of this hole with epoxy because these things just aren't tall enough to, um, to go all the way down. And the reason I do that is because this plug, if you cut it all the way through on the CNC, it will get sucked up by the dust collector and they, they'll never be perfectly round like that. So you have to leave about an eighth of an inch on the bottom of the plug when you cut out on the CNC. So, let me get started. Let me set up this camera so you can watch me glue these pieces in. The first thing I'm gonna do is clean this off, the top of the, the material off with some acetone. I already blew these, these holes out, so it should be pretty clean. And we're gonna use this adhesive. This is Glacier White. I'm gonna put the glue right around the hole and I'm gonna let it stick out the top of the hole a little bit. Like I want it to go around because as I push the plug in, it's gonna start weeping down into the hole. So I'll take the, the plug and we're gonna push it down inside there, and I just spin it as I go down there. I kind of push down there and they're tight, but I don't pound it in there. I don't want it to be super tight. I want there to be a little bit of adhesive there. It's like that. Just spin it as it goes in there. You want to make sure there's glue around the plug because as it cures, it's going to shrink and you don't want there to be a, a gap 
All right. So that set of four holes is fixed. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh, perfect, just like that. There's plenty of glue around each plug. And so now I just have to do 76 more. But once this cures, I'll show you how we're going to sand this down. We're back. The adhesive is dry. I'm going to show you now how to sand down those plugs smooth with the top of the, the countertop material. The first step in the process is sanding those plugs down with this five inch direct drive sander. So Metabo, it's variable speed. I set it at about two. That seems to cut it down pretty quick. And then I move over to a porter cable. This is a random orbit sander. And finally, we're gonna use this Bauer. This is actually from Harbor Freight. Does really well with, with this, but these, both of these don't have dust collection, so that's why they're not the greatest, especially for inside house. But this has a maroon scotch bright, and that's gonna buff these spots out and blend them into their surrounding areas because these countertops are already finished up. Let's get started. That's perfectly flat. If you take your hand and you use the palm of your hand to rub it across where those areas are, you'll find out if it's perfectly flat. There's no divots, it looks perfect. Let me see if you can see it. When I have this plastic on, I just sand over the plastic so it still protects the surrounding areas. But then when you go to sand with the dual action sander, you'll have to move it back a little bit. And I'll just blend it in where I'm peeling this plastic back right now. And that maroon scotch bright does a great job of blending it to the old existing finish. This is 220 grit sandpaper. I run the dual action sander at full speed. And because this is such a small area, it's not gonna take that much time. I'll probably go over it just 10 times.
So I go over it 10 times. One, two, three. Go at, you know, slow speed. And again, this 3M Maroon Scotch Bright does the trick in blending it into the surrounding areas. Let me wipe it off. This is just water. You spray, you spray a little water, and I'm talking to mist it on there. Not a lot, so it's spraying all over your clothes, but if you mist it on there, it tends to help blend it way better than if you just use a, a dry scotch spray. The light helps see if where the, it's blended or not. This looks perfect. Let me see if I can show you that. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. But as I look on an angle, it really blends in nice. There's no harsh line at all where the material, you know, is blended, is blended right around here. So, and again, that's due to this, this maroon scotch brite. Very important that you use this. And this one's a little bit used. I was scotch brighting some other pieces with it. But if you get a brand new one, it'll do the job. Nice. Anyway, that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, comment below. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps. Take care.